Good morning everyone, welcome back to the Hearthstone Arena. My name is Rooster and I am speaking to you from the future because I was an idiot and I forgot to turn on my mic for the first game of this episode. Um, so until then you are stuck with post-game commentary I'm afraid, but uh, this game was good enough that I didn't want to withhold it from you. Um, and I'll take... Um, Past me will take over after the first game, uh, when I realize my mistake and will correct it. So the first game was against the Paladin. Um, by the way, we are 4 and O with this rogue deck, which I don't think is too amazing. Um, and yeah, I'm, um, I'm still not sure about uh, about how much tempo should be contained in the average arena deck. So this, um, this deck, if you haven't seen the first part, yeah, it's a bit of a tempo-heavy deck, a lot of two drops, um, and it the kind of has to win mine. early. So, Hello, challenger. Um, definitely keeping a two and a three, and uh, happy with that situation. Um, Clockwork Gnome, not excellent here, but am I always this nervous when I click the battlefield? It's it's weird watching yourself play at, at times. <clears throat> uh, but but always playing the two drop and also checking for repentance, which is a nice uh, nice convenient side activity. Um, Scarlet's Crusader is not exactly when, uh, what you want to see when uh, when you've got a three one on the field. So uh, that pool remains stealth for quite some time. Um, I'm not exactly sure what would be the play here. I'm kind of thinking about checking for a noble sacrifice here and getting rid of the divine shield at the same time. Um, and trading a Clockwork Gnome for a uh, 3-1 is not terrible, so definitely um, definitely satisfied with that trade if it was going to happen. Um, and keeping the 3-1 stealth is not terrible because it's not yet time for a Consecrate yet. So definitely convinced that the secret is avenged by this point. Um, that the secret is avenged. Um, and that means we've got a pretty good trade on the table, uh, which means that if Avenge procs, then I can trade the uh, Twisting Worgen into whatever gets buffed by the uh, um, by the Avenge. Uh, so that's a decent trade, and then I can even play a Tomb Spider or a Spider Tank. Uh, I'm not sure which uh, which is the one I went with, but I can see arguments for either one. Uh, the Tomb Spider is less terrible if it gets killed by uh, by True Silver Champion, for example, and it is a little more curve efficient. Um, so, yeah, a Mooklass Champion is not going to happen anytime soon, uh, so I think I went with the Tall Strider here. Uh, but definitely a good idea to um, to check out your curve for a bit. Hopefully playing the Kodo next turn. So, uh, I actually went for the Snake, I think, just to fill up the curve a little bit. Uh, because Kodo is probably happening um, next turn, Spider Tank, and Hero Power is also not terrible, which means that I could play the Kodo on turn 6 and then uh, the Pit Snake along with it. Uh, but it looks like Kodo is going to be the play here. Uh, because that's a, that's a pretty good trade with the... Um, well, it's going to get decent value out of the Kodo, and that's always a good thing. Um, another option would be to Spider Tank Hero Power, which is also not awful. And I think I went with the greedy approach here um, of trying to get something better with the Stampeding Kodo, which I'm not sure, uh, in hindsight, is actually the best play. Um, so a little... Um, yeah, in, in retrospect, I think I would have just taken the trade with the Kodo here, but uh, I can definitely see where, um, where I'm coming from with this. And the Spider Tank is not actually that much worse than the Kodo. And having a 3-1 on the field is almost just as good as having uh, having a 3-3. Except in the slight, slightly awkward case of the opponent consecrating here, which I'm absolutely fine with if he uh, if she does that right now. So that doesn't hurt. Um, hoping to get some value with the Kodo, but that's going to be quite a while, as you shall soon discover. Um, trading the 3-1 in here is not awful, um, so definitely looks like a way to go. Another thing to consider is Shadow Striking the Fan Creeper, um, and then daggering into it, which uh, which is some excellent value and lets us develop an additional Spider Tank on the field, so that's uh, that's also pretty good. Uh, trading in the, sp uh, the Spider would mean that, uh, that I also trade in either the Spider Tank or the Mecha Gnome. Uh, which would be a consideration, but um, but my turn is actually rather weak this turn, regardless. 
So I think, uh, I think in retrospect, I would probably go for the Shadow Strike, but, uh, but being a little greedy with that is also uh, a definite go. consideration. Now, developing the Spider Tank does allow for quite an intimidating board, so definitely not faulting myself for this play. It's funny, I should, make, uh, I should watch my own replays more often. It's something that, uh, that I can recommend people to, to actually do. Um, allows you to, to experience a game through a different lens, I would say. Who am I? I'm, I'm finding I have a lot, of, um, a lot of different insights than I had during the game. Um, I was really scared about the amount of secrets that would, would, would have popped up here, but it appears it is not actually a secret paladin deck. It just happens to have a mysterious challenger in it. And that's fine. Um, Traits, again, not looking too awful. Um, daggering up is not uh, is not out of the question. Uh, because it allows us to trade the 3-1 and the 2-1 plus the dagger in. Uh, and, well, does not let us play... Does not let us play the Yormungar, actually. So that's a little unfortunate. Uh, could be greedy with the Time Rewinder on the Tomb Spider, uh, which might be the way to go. Um, and then eviscerate down the mysterious challenger. That's not awful. And I think that's the way. Um, that's the way I'm going to solve this one. Even though it's um, it's a little wasteful of the eviscerate. I think. Actually, I'm entirely wrong. And developing, uh, developing the pit snake is not awful because our opponent is likely to play something big next turn. Uh, deliberating whether it's worth to attack face here, and it is because that would pose lethal for us um, sooner rather than later. Uh, of course, uh, we are heading into turn 7, so some pretty big stuff can start coming out. But that's what the pit snake uh, protects us from. So, with that, um, first game is over, and I think we'll pretty soon start hearing my own, my own voice, so I'm going to shut up right now. Hey everyone, good morning and welcome back to the Hearthstone Arena. I just realized my microphone was off, so um, you missed my commentary during that first game. Um, I have recorded it and I hope you did enjoy it despite the lack of my usual banter. Uh, but it was a pretty great game, so, uh, so I'm actually kind of proud of that. Um, and this is not a horrific opener. Actually, I might have underestimated this deck a little bit. Just just a teensy little bit. As long as we can get a strong opener, and we're actually likely to get a strong opener with uh, with two one drops and a decent amount of two drops. Um, I like it, I like it. Um, I don't like this card though. It might be good as a finisher, but that's about it. That is about it. I'm getting a little nervous right now, because we're facing some rather strong decks, I believe. And, uh, well, if we can't out-tempo them, then I don't think we have the best chance ever. Um, but we, we can definitely get there, as we've seen in the past few games. Um, I wonder whether I, my opponent is actually... There we are. There we are. Um, yeah, I will probably dagger and kill that. I don't have a great turn 2 play anyway, so I don't mind. And zombie chows are made to trade. If, you, if your best play is to zombie chow face and then and then do nothing, that's not a great sign. And if her best play is to hero power this, then that's also not a good sign for her. Um, but it's... yeah, it is the best play in a lot of situations, I'll, I'll admit. Uh, but this is not awful, so definitely glad to have that spider tank here. And we can make something work next turn. Worst comes to worst, we can Hero Power and Clockwork Gnome, which is not awful. Uh, but it may be what we have to do. Well, we, uh, we can at least make a trade here. Uh, do we want to make a trade? I think we do. This Beneath the Grants is not getting cast for any stretch of time, I think. Uh, but I do have the Clockwork Gnome, which is rather good if I have another one health minion on the field. So that's that's entirely okay. I like this. Um, this only gets wrecked by basically Arcane Explosion or Arcane Missiles. 
Oh, or or the, the three mana minion that deals one damage to each minion in your opponent's control, actually. That could be troublesome. Um, still not that great a play, actually, because it's a two health minion and I still have a harvest golem in play. I think I would still be okay with that. Um, I could take it slow and dagger up here and just trade away the, the haunted creeper. Which isn't awful, but I kind of like playing the Naga Sea Witch here, just to put some pressure on the field. And if she hero powers the Clockwork now next turn, I think I'm pretty satisfied with my decision. So if, if that's the best she can do, then, um, then that's okay. And my, my alternative would be to, to trade the Clockwork Gnome into the Haunted Creeper. Which is a likely scenario that's going to happen next turn anyway. So yeah, yeah, I would be fine with that. I'm a little worried about what she got from the from the spell 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 whatever. Um, spell slinger. There we go. I wonder. Um, so yeah, likely scenario is she trades into the haunted creeper. Um, she trades the haunted creeper into the clockwork gnome. And then perhaps fireballs this, and then I'm entirely okay with that. I, I, I don't mind. Whoa. Okay, well. She must have an arcane explosion or something. Yeah, yeah, so, so that was the one I was worried about last turn. Oh, that's actually pretty disgusting. Okay, um, that is a little worrisome, I'll admit. And the five mana eviscerate doesn't look too appealing. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that. Uh, we could hero power trade this in, and then hmm, hmm. yeah, indeed, I, I agree, Valera. This is a bit of a hmm situation. That was a pretty good turn for him. Uh, this card is quite a tempo swing. Um, but I think we can eviscerate that, and then, then we don't have a lot to play, actually. Mm. So that is uh, a little annoying. We could trade an Entomb Spider, and then... We don't have to eviscerate, actually. We can just Tomb Spider here. Which I guess is fine-ish. Tomb Spider into Tomb Spider? Yep, we're doing it. And just killing one of these. I, I guess I'm okay with that. We can play the card advantage battle here. Um, although this Beneath the Grounds is not really doing much for us. That's a little annoying. That was much better than I thought. Much better. Um, that's a big dude. That is most certainly a big dude. But I think I can counter that by playing Sunwalker here. Or perhaps just Tomb Spider again? That seems really slow, though. Um, I can eviscerate it next turn, so if I can at least be be kind of efficient this turn, then that's acceptable. So how am I... how am I going to be slightly efficient this turn? If it takes any damage, then I can trade something into it. So that's fine. Um, I could even next turn. Well, that's that's awfully slow. I'm not going to do that. I'm I'm tempted to just tomb spider here and see what I get. And by tempted, I mean I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, Strangle Turn Tiger is a good card. I'll I'll take that one. And nothing we do really does much on the board anyway. Let's let's beneath the grounds for some excitement. I like it. We're we're taking some damage here, probably. Um, or she wastes a card to deal with the Tomb Spider, uh, but most likely scenario actually is that she trades the Ogre into the Tomb Spider, and then we can eviscerate it next turn. Or we can't. Or we can't. That's unfortunate. That is most unfortunate. Uh, we can at least eviscerate that and face tank it, and then play the Sunwalker, which is not awful. Then that thing goes down to two health. I still don't like it much, but it might be the best option we have right now. 
It does at least get rid of one thing on the board, and we can afford to take it a little less efficient. Let's play the one we top decked. Um, the heal on the golem is really, really annoying. We may still have to eviscerate it next turn, and that, that makes our turn actually rather inefficient. So let's hope she doesn't have another big dude, because that could be troublesome. Well, we can swap it. If she if she does that, then we can swap it, and then, then we have to deal 6 damage to it. Oh, that could be terrible. Yeah, yeah, that could be pretty terrible. Hey, hey, that worked! Hurrah! Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty good all of a sudden. Huh, suddenly I'm not so worried anymore. Um, yeah, so Tiger and Eviscerate and Dagger up, I think. That's a little slow, but I'm just going to get the Direwolf killed, I think. Although it does provide, yeah, I think I'll just develop the Direwolf here. We can even swap this to gain an extra health on it. I don't hate it. And all of a sudden, the board is flipped. Uh, that, that, that was just the amount of damage I needed. I needed uh, I needed some kind of effect to deal two damage to that, and and well, servant of Yuxeron delivered. That's pretty great. I don't have a good way to deal with this though. Oh oh, that's a killer. Wow. Um, that's ugly. I'm probably taking six off of that. Or, or, hear me out here. I can actually swap the Rocketeer, which makes it a 3-6. That's still not that great, but it does get rid of that. I can also not swap the Rocketeer, and then it deals with this. I can swap this, and then the Rocketeer deals with it and still dies. Okay, okay. Uh, swapping does nothing here. I can swap the Direwolf to preserve it. How's that? How is that? Everything still dies to Flame Strike, though. I can swap this, then. How's that? I like that better. Yes. Um, so that does mean we're killing this with the Rocketeer. I don't feel good about that. I don't feel good about that at all. But I'm afraid we have to. Yeah, we're going to trade this anyway, okay. I don't like it. I don't like that one bit. We're going to do it anyway. Let's swap this so it doesn't die to flame strike. I like having a 5-6 here. It does die to flame strike. Correction. Wait, huh? Why does it have... Oh! That is... Really odd. It's giving plus one attack, yet I don't understand. This is all very confusing to me. And I can never beat that Ronin. Oh my gosh. That Ronin is absolutely going to wreck me. And I can do nothing to stop it. Except go face, I guess. Alright, well, we know what our purpose is. The only way we're going to win it is race it, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid the only way we're going to win from this road in here is by racing. I think we're, we're making a pretty good argument here. Uh, but we can get shot down by a lot of things here. By a surprising lot of things. So that's not very good, but yeah, yeah, the flame strike had to happen eventually. It had to happen eventually. I'm not sure why she didn't. Well, it turned out to be pretty good after all, but yeah. That's going to be an effigy or a duplicate, isn't it? I can't afford to kill that. I can't afford to kill that even if I wanted to. Um, let's give her a Stormwind Knight, because I prefer that over this thing. That is not a charge, that's good. Is that a vaporize? And am I going to do anything about it if it is? I think the answer is no. Are we going to dagger Ronin twice? I think the answer to that is also no. Alright. 
I'm not sure what we're hoping to get here, but uh, it better be good. Maybe some stupid move in which Ronin dies and she RK missiles the Berserker. And then we top deck. I have no idea. I don't think we can ever win this anymore. She has four cards in hand. A 7-3 on the table. And another cone of gold. Well, the thing did get enraged, so I, so I did kind of get my wish, right? But this is uh, this is not going to work. Wow. Ah, uh, so what what wrecked me here? I was I was doing reasonably, I was doing reasonably well, and then something absolutely wrecked me, and I don't remember what it was. Maybe it's the sea witch turn again. The sea witch proved to be rather inefficient. Oh well, um, we're 5-1 and one and probably the opposition is going to uh, to decline a little bit, to, to de degenerate. Uh, so we might be able to catch up this time. Um, but there's some pretty uh, pretty valuable decks in there. You asked for it. Watch your back. Starting out with a zombie chow is kind of valuable though. Um, and I I kinda like the Eviscerate in my starting hand. It proves... Gives me an answer to uh, to some of the... More troublesome stuff that my opponents might be playing. And Tomb Spider is not awful. I, I wouldn't mind another Tomb Spider into Tomb Spider. Although, last game that didn't help us too much. That seems weak. And it appears it is. It appears it, it, it actually is pretty good. Um, are we interested in playing a direwolf here? What could punish it? I actually kind of like daggering up here, but we don't have anything to synergize with that. We can still dagger up next turn and deal 4 to something, which I guess might work if she coins out something. Not sure what to expect, um, and this is going to be a rather weak turn, I'm afraid. So it's just going to be dagger up and hit her for five, and then she heals for five again, so... Well, we didn't do much there, but at least we, we have some stuff on the table, and... It's possible, though not plausible, that the direwolf survives here. She frostbolts that, she kills the direwolf, that's acceptable. And then coin into what? Oh. I taste blood. Coin into another stealth. Okay, uh, well, I'll certainly face check that. And I'll certainly play a Tomb Spider into the 3 1 stealth. That is acceptable. Um, we are not planning on giving our opponent any bananas. Although, it might be the best card in here, because this is not going to be relevant for quite some time. Um, and the bananas, they, they can't be disastrous. I think I can keep board control with the double eviscerates. So I think Mukla is actually okay here, as strange as that may sound. In nor most normal situations, I would take the 7 mana minion, but we already have a 7 mana minion, it seems really weak. Mm, and maybe taking board control isn't going to be as easy as I expected, but we'll see about that. We can Mukla into Mukla into Eviscerate, uh, or just Spider Tank Eviscerate. Is that better? I kind of prefer the Spider Tank Eviscerate, because it will still deal with uh, most of what comes out there without immediately giving our opponent the opportunity to remove it. Well, that's convenient. It gives her a card, which is uh, which is not good. Letting your opponent draw cards is, is never... never preferable, but at least she doesn't have any minions on the board right now, which is convenient for when we're trying to get a Mukla off. Which we still can, although... although the Berserker is Probably going to be better right now. We're going to need to use another Eviscerate, though. 
are we? Or can we drop? No, we cannot drop two minions. So our turn is going to be really weak unless we eviscerate, which makes it acceptable. I, I am okay with this, but only because we have another eviscerate. And let's hope to be able to deal with whatever our opponent plays next, because that is going to kill us if we lose the joust here. Right. Well, we, we have one of our own. That's that's something. Um, are we throwing something to the wolves here? We basically have to hair power that down, though. Um, so that means we're only playing Tomb Spider? I guess that's okay. We might discover something. I'm not sure. Maybe a Pit Snake. A Pit Snake would have been really sweet. Well, I guess that's a Pit Snake, just a little bigger. That could be okay. Um, I can trade two things into that one. And then have the Emperor Cobra still left over. Uh, but I have to I have to get rid of the Divine Shield right now. Um, and in that case, well, I'm not taking the Dragon Hawk. So let's take the Emperor Cobra and let's face tank this one. Just so we have the opportunity to trade two minions in. Um, if we... Um, if we didn't lose the Joust there, we would have had some better options, I think. She's going for the spell power, that's interesting. I'm not sure I agree. Um, but we can play this Capture Jormungar here, or we can just kill that. How's that? Then we can play... We don't have a great play after that. We can Shadow Strike it, but... We might just want to save the Shadow Strike for something more impactful. So that always happens. Um, we're not using Mukla here. Are we not? We could Mukla and Emperor Cobra. Is that decent? Seems really weak on the board net right now. This at least forces an answer. I kinda prefer that. I'll, I'll save the dagger for now. Missing one damage is not going to be the end of the world, I think. Does force out the sheep, so that's okay. Double spell power is starting to be a little worrisome. But at least we can Shadow Strike and then she seems to be really protective of that thing. <laughs> I'm not going to allow that. Um, so we might want to Shadow Strike that down, and then we can... Well, we could theoretically just flood the board with a Shady Dealer, a Mukla, and an Emperor Cobra. She can kill one of them with double banana and hero power, but that's okay. I actually don't hate that play. Oh, um, Shady Dealer, Mukla... And Shadow Strike. I like it. Want a deal? I like the Shady Dealer over the Emperor Cobra because it kind of forces more of a direct answer. And I'll hit one of these mostly so I can get rid of it next turn. If uh, if she doesn't if she doesn't immediately be a banana it up, that is. An interesting path. Alright, well at least we got rid of uh, another polymorph effect, so that's okay. And... That is probably fine. I don't like it, but I don't have to like it. Um, I can hero power... Hero power barber and then sunwalker. I think I like it. She can't ping both the shield and the last health on the on the Sunwalker. So and this can still kill this. Here we so we're hitting this. Are we even hitting this though? I think we may not. We may not actually hit this. Although, no, I think it's fine. She either pings the shield or she pings this. And that's okay. Because if she pings the shield, then the 4-1 gets a free trade against the 4-3, and if she does not ping the shield, then the Divine Shield gets a free trade into the 4-3. So that's that's basically potato-potato. 
uh, one of those again, that's probably fine. Oh, uh, buffs it up, I guess that's okay. We still, we still get a nice trade with the knife, so yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. We're starting to get a little low here, but this is definitely acceptable. And preferable to her getting a trade with the 5-5 five five into the Sunwalker, yes. Um, let's not... Well, we do have to actually put on some pressure here, so do we play the Spider Tank? I don't think her last card is a Flame Strike, let's be honest here. And if she does Flame Strike, well, then she spends her turn Flame Striking and pinging. I guess that's acceptable. Trading the 2-3 into the 5-5, five five, that's entirely okay. Um, we might get a better option, but uh, for now I would be I would be fine with this. No, and she's going the aggressive path. She might have a Pyroblast in hand even. Am I that worried about it? Not really. This is, uh, this is not proving to be that much damage. I'm not sure whether even spending a lot of time clearing that is going to be a good Here idea, though. Go. I don't think so. Um, there's no way we're not what playing this, right? Justice I don't think the, the Gargoyle is meaningful in the least, so let's not worry about that. Oh, I actually didn't need to dagger up there. Maybe in case of... not even in case of Force Tank Max. No, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not sure whether it's relevant in the least, but... No, no, it's not going to be relevant at all. No one, no one picks Harrison Jones in, uh, in Arena. Um, and we basically have to overextend here. Uh, we can't afford to, to, to waste two damage on that, but we're not going to die to Pyroblast, I think. I think she played the card she top decked, mm. so that might be Pyroblast after all. For honor. I don't plan on dying to that. Um, and let's put lethal on the board. Is this lethal next turn? This is lethal next turn, but she might get something like a fireball. If she flame strikes, we're pretty much dead. Um, but yeah, let's let's actually keep it. This is still lethal if she kills the smallest guy, right? Let's keep one card in hand. I'm kind of hedging my bets here, but she. Mages don't get to, well, Mages might still get to 5 wins if they do have, if they do have, um, thingamajig. Right. Um, that's a big, that's a big dude though. Mm, can we get rid of that this turn? Answer's no. Um, so that means we can do 2 damage to face, that's not worth taking 6 damage for. Uh, this is going to slam into this no matter what. Uh, oh, I thought I might as well kill the Gargoyle, but that's not going to happen. Uh, and now the Gargoyle does get a trait into a 2-2. I guess I'm okay with that. Let's Flood, and... Would it have mattered if we played that last turn? Yes, then we would have had lethal. Okay, um, I should be playing around Bog Creeper, I guess. Let's pass. And hope... She does not have a flame strike here. That's going to be the card she's. Okay. She's been holding a mind control deck for that long. We did just flood beyond three minions, right? Yes, yes, we did. Um, and this is still lethal. Wait, it's not. It is actually not. That is horrible. Do we die? Wait, this trade's here, then we have six. We only have six. She has eleven. That's horrible, we need to trade now. Let's see. That kills that. And this kills the three three. And then she has eight damage. And we can still deal three to face. So she needs to trade both in, and that's still not good enough. Cannot afford to leave something alive. We can trade both into this thing, and she can trade both into this. That's still terrible. It's it's 
always terrible. I think. He who duck decks better wins. That's the way it's going to be. That bug creeper really killed me. Uh, but then again, the mind control tag might have gotten me on that turn. I couldn't imagine her waiting to trade for that, though. Oh, this is bad. Oh, well, she really wants to fire Blast Face, I guess. Um, that's not going to do it. All right, well, well that is not going to do it. Unfortunate. Um, yeah, we might have won if we played the Silver and Night there, but, but she would have mind control tanked that turn. So it's still... it's still unclear. Alright, um, let's hope this is not the final game, uh, but it might be. Let's at least play one and then call it a day. And the next episode might be really short or might be a lot longer. But we'll, uh, we'll find out quickly, I guess. It just occurs to me that I do need to make an annotation at the, at the start of this video uh, about the missing mic thing. Or I might try and record some post-game footage over that. That would mean I had to render the entire thing and my PC is a potato as of late. So that might not, uh, might not actually happen. Uh, but you'll have found out already if you've seen the start of this video. Um, I hope I'm not the one disconnecting right now, but rather it's my opponent. Because this is taking way too long, and I don't think it's my connection. My connection seems fine for now. My battle net is okay, so I think it's my opponent not connecting. Battle net seems fine, battle net seems fine. I think it's my opponent. Um, all right, cutting here. Let's see what happens. I'm kind of afraid right now. I have a quest. I have an arena run, I hope. Do I still have an arena? I still have an arena run. Okay, good, good. Let's go. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was a little worried right there. Um, I have no idea what happened. Perhaps I never really connected to the game at all. But the game doesn't really tell you what went wrong. Um, I'm going to blame the servers here. Or either that or my opponent, but I didn't win a game, so I expect my opponent also didn't win a game. Uh, we'll see. Um, not keeping two Eviscerates, and definitely not keeping Naga Sea Witch. I do like Eviscerate against Totem Golem, but I do need something to combo with. So I guess it might be too slow, actually. Uh, well, we'll see. I do like keeping one in case of emergency, basically. Now for the real question. Do I play the Abusive Sergeant? Or do I hope to be able to combo with it later? Or get some value out? I think I have to get some value out of the um, Battle Cry. Either that or combo it with Eviscerate to destroy something. I think that's important enough. Hello there. Um, would that have done much good for us? I don't think so. A Twisted Borgen is a good enough minion to play here. Could go for the, uh, for the Acidic Swampoos, but I think this is a bit safer. And we might still be able to Eviscerate combo to kill it if it gets buffed, or... If it gets buffed by a totem golem, we can uh, we can abuse of sergeant and get it down. Uh, that's actually also fine. Um, hello, constructed shaman. 
good to see you here. Um, so do we combo and just kill off the board here? We have an abusive sergeant on the board, he's overloaded for one, and we can dagger plus auto barber next turn. I think I like that. Is that worth an eviscerate? I think that's worth an eviscerate. Yeah, sure. Doesn't really matter too much, but, um, but I like this play and it does give us the board. Let's see what his answer is. Uh, because I like the Dagger plus Auto Barber plan. Should be able to even deal with another Totem Golem. And that is a weak turn 3 for him, so that's pretty good. Um, we could still... Oh, oh, I don't, I don't hate that. I'd like to get a knife out here, so let's play the Bone Guard, Dagger up, and pass. Should still be able to deal with most of the stuff my opponent's going to throw out, so that's good. Uh, can we deal with a 7-7 right now? Only by throwing everything in the kitchen sink at it, but we can. So that's good news. We have to take 7 for it, but we still have an auto barber and a 2-1 dagger left over, so I think I'm okay with that scenario. I, I wouldn't like it, but it's... Uh, if it happens, then we have the answer, and it's pretty much what we have to do, so... Uh, that is good news for us, however. That's going to be a pretty good deal, if I say so myself. I don't mind trading the 2-1 in here. Not at all. Here we go. And him not having a mech to combo with that is really good for us. I like it. There we go. So, um, that's a pretty strong board. We were getting wrecked by Lightning Storm only if our opponent gets incredibly lucky. And that doesn't really leave him much to do this turn or the next turn. Our hand, however, is really weak. So unless he plays a weapon right now... Oh, oh, that's going to be pretty good. Unless he plays it, even if he plays a two-cost mech here, we can probably deal with that. Uh, so killing the second swing of that weapon is going to be pretty good for us, I'd say. And we even get something to combo with it. That is pretty amazing, if I say so myself. Um, do I mind damaging my minions here? I don't mind damaging the harvest golem, I think. There we go. Um, playing right into Mind Control Tech, playing right into Lightning Storm. But at least he doesn't get the second swing of his weapon, and neither does he get the buff on one of his mech minions. And if he's playing Gorilla Bot, I expect an above average amount of mechs in his deck, so definitely happy to get that out of the way. That's a nice heal, though. I'll, I'll admit that's a nice heal. And he still had the coin. I have to confess, that is really brave. But it turned out to be okay for him. I'm surprised. That, that did turn out to be okay for him, but that was really, really brave. Um, do we want to trade one of our minions in? I think we, uh, we kind of have to. I'll trade the Harvest Golem plus the Dagger and just go aggressive. Uh, do we want to swap anything? We don't really want to swap anything. Um, he hasn't shown any any signs of lightning storm so far. So I might be okay with just swapping the zombie chow. It seems really weak, but we do have to pressure somewhat. And we're not going to do it without the zombie chow. So this is, uh, this is really weak. It can also kill a totem. I don't like using it in this way against the shaman. Did we attack with everything? We did attack with everything. Uh, but at least if we top deck a force tank max, we, we don't get stuck with cards in our hands. Um, and the extra attack on the zombie chow might actually matter. For example, if he plays a 7-7, seven, seven, then we can trade in two three twos and hero power it <laughs> don't like that at all but if that's what we have to do then that's what we have to do and i think keeping his board empty is going to be the path to success here 
Uh, is not the card we're looking for. Um, but I'm okay with just making some trades here. Do we want to preserve the zombie chow for now? I actually don't mind preserving it. Um, so we're making some awkward trades, uh, but that's probably fine. It reduces the, the, the amount we're getting wrecked by uh, by lightning storm here. And if we, if we can preserve the health on the zombie chow, then all the better. Um, he's, he's incentivized to kill that one first, and I don't mind. Um, I don't have a silence in my deck, but I could turn Spider into an Owl, I guess. And as long as it uh, as long as it lives, we have a lot more pressure. So I guess that's good. And if you play something huge, then we we have an answer. So still okay with that. I would definitely appreciate top decking something big right now, because we haven't had any big cards so far. I think maybe maybe even a tomb spider. Was he waiting for uh, for a taunt here? I can't imagine. Oh, that is that is somewhat okay, I guess. Is that all though? Oh, that's okay. Okay, I can shadow strike that. Shadow strike and face tank. I don't like it, but it's uh, it's what we have to do. Um, do we mind healing our opponents? Yes, we do mind healing our opponents. And we want to keep as much power on the board as possible here. Um, so trading in this one, uh, we're not going to. No, we can't kill that without killing the flame tongue first. So always killing the flame tongue, shadow striking this one, and then face tanking it. And spider tank afterwards. That is that is ten damage on the board, so with an eviscerate we are one of lethal. That's great. Great that that, that knowledge is great. Not being able to top that lethal. Um, not trading into that Tomb Spider, I think. I may actually have to. Hmm. Don't like it. Um, need to top deck something big, but I've been saying that for a couple turns. Well, I think I'm okay with that one, though. They're looking for something to trade my uh, my stuff into. And we can still clear this board relatively easily. Um, should we clear this board though? We can deal 9 damage to face, but then he can start trading rather efficiently, I think. The 1 2 doesn't really mean anything though. So we can reasonably. So we can reasonably leave that one alive, can't we? Okay, that means we're making this trade, this trade, this goes face. Um, we can kill this over 2 turns, I don't mind. Um, I'm taking a bit of extra damage, is that okay? We might actually appreciate the extra pressure on face. Um, but these top decks aren't working in our favor. I guess maybe my deck just lacks late game of any description. That's rough, man. That's, <laughs> that's really rough. That's going to require the... Uh, Trades of both of my minions, and I immediately regret not trading into the one two. Uh, that's another point. Are you playing another card here? Let's see. What can we top deck that's good here? I guess that kind of works. I'm not happy about it, but it kind of works. So, well, we'll have to work with that. Um, I could even... Yeah, it's what, it's what we have to do right now. This is what it has come to. Um, so he can trade that in, and then trade the other one in. That's fine with me. I don't see any reason to attack either of them then. Oh, I regret not killing that little dude. It's not like it's not like it would have mattered. Well, he can at least make a totem and then oh my gosh, a ten ten. How am I ever going to beat a ten ten? I don't have an assassinate, I don't have a sap. Oh, eleven and eleven! Why not? 
Uh, let's discover a beast. That's really great. We can combat an 11-11 by killing him next turn if he doesn't trade it off. How is that? We can't play the core hound. We cannot play the core hound. How is that? So many options. In that case, do we take the Mooplus Champion or do we take the Strangletorn Tiger? If he hits face with this... We can take the champion, that at least forces the trade, right? I think that forces... Oh, we, but we have already... No, we haven't hero powered this I turn. Wonder. So this is just going to be a 3-3, three, three, and this is just going to be a 4-3. I think I prefer the stealth. That at least gives us a chance to win, I think. I don't like this at all. Uh, but we can win with no uh, Reckless Rocketeer. Yes, we can win with Reckless, Reckless Rocketeer this way. Even... no, not not if he kills the Tomb Spider. Uh, but I don't think he can resist the lure of 11 damage in my face. So that is what might... what might win us this game? I don't know. Um, uh, assuming he doesn't kill us here, we have some outs. Does that work? It's one damage short. Ah, oh, that is so disappointing. Here we go. Here we go. Well played. That is so disappointing. Oh well. Um, at least we're finished in two episodes, right? So, hey, there's something for that. And we unlocked a Golden War Golem. What else could we possibly want? I am going to need more late game in my decks. I was I was thinking a, a Tempo Rogue deck might uh, might do the trick, and it did the trick for five, uh, for five games. It's actually uh, rather surprising, I'll say. Um, the Roar, the Roar is okay. You can never complain that when you at least get 50 gold, right? So let's see what we get here. Uh, but yeah, I'll admit to be a little, being a little disappointed here. I'm not sure how I can how I can not spoil the ending now. Mm. Not sure how that's going to work out. Oh, I needed one of those. That's nice. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode of Arena of the Old Gods, uh, and I'll see you again next week.